John here again and in this video I think this is video 3 of the OSK Mon monitor program and what I've done is I've in in this latest uh, installment I've added the assembler and disassembler modules to the program so just to uh, show you the changes that I've done so in the monitor at the bottom I have added them to the include but I've also changed the storage locations before I individually assigned the storage location and, I, and, and it turned out I'd got my maths a bit wrong so what I've done is I've started the first one at its location and then, and then I've just added one to the previous one to make sure all the storage capabilities are not intruding on other things because I was getting some weird and wonderful um, effects should I'll so, sort of say uh, when I was debugging the coat uh, the assembler and in the OSK options I've just added the two command lines for the assembler and the disassembler so the assembler basically uh, runs like this so you type in a the address the opcode and the operand if it's needed and so what we do is we just in we just evaluate each line in turn so the first thing I should get is a number which is the address and if I don't an error is raised but if I do I store it in the add vector and the add vector high initialize Y to be zero and then I input Port every character thereafter and store it in the context and the reason I store it in the context is because then it allows me to look at it many many times because but when you're reading it off the keyboard buffer you can only read it once so it's just a temporary storage just to store it and then I carry on doing it until I reach return which means it's the end of line and then we go into um, doing the assembly so I store the length of the string that I've just done it if it's zero I'll send it back to ready because if there's no commands there I don't need to uh, um, I don't need to do an assembly function and it. it means I've finished first thing we do need to do is we need to find out what mode it is so if I jump down to the mode so there's the mode jump table have I missed it? no branch there we go mode hunt there we go and what we're doing we're testing certain things so is it three characters so it will load in the length of it is it three characters only if it's not equal it goes on to the next one if it is then it's mode a now mode a is um, uh, iny, INY BRK, PLA, it's just a three character, uh, TAX and all that. It jumps to this and then it says, is it a six character um, string? So that um, that means it would be um, LDA, open bracket, forgotten what, what it is now, six. Three, four, five, six. Right, that's a zero. That's a zero page um, addressing mode. Zero page. So it's LDA dollar one four. That's six. Yep. So if it's six, that means it's going to be a zero page um, operation. So that's we set that to be a zero page mode. If it's seven. Now that's going to be LDA dollar so six seven will be bracket dollar no. oh rats it's late brains escaped me seven. So seven characters. Three. Oh, so it's not a jump because that's eight. 
and seven characters. Absolute. Yeah, absolute. So that's going to be an absolute. Then if it's not an absolute, then we say we load the com text comma seven. So we're now testing past the absolute limit. Is it an X? That means it's a, a comma X uh, addressing mode. Is it Y? Then it means it's a comma Y addressing mode. 44, 44. That's a comma, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a comma. That'll be the zero page, zero page indexer. And 41, that's all, that's close bracket. Yeah, so that's going to be a zero page indexing uh, addressing mode. So rather than zero page comma Y, it's zero page comma X close bracket. And that's how we work out the modes. And the modes determine how we um, dis uh, assemble the, um, the, 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 the command. So we, we determine what mode it is. So we determine what addressing mode it is. And then we go, um, once we've determined what addressing mode it is, we go hunting for the command. So if I go back up. Yeah, so we determine the addressing mode, we store it away. If it's addressing mode M, then it, it errors, because there's no such thing. If it isn't, it carries on, and then it does the op search, the opcode search. And the opcode search is pretty simple. Basically what it does, there we go, it loads in the very first start of the opcodes, and runs through and tries to match the three characters in the keyboard buffer that we stored away, the temporary string, with the three characters in the opcode array. And if it finds the three characters, then it tests the mode. So here we are, so it's doing the branch if not equal to three. So it goes back to five, so it comes back. If it is, then it loads the next character, which is the mode and then compares it with the mode that we've derived and if they are both if the three characters are identical and the modes identical then it loads the um, opcode value and then returns back to the assembler so once we have derived the operation code then we then start evaluating what we're getting so it works out on all the the, the modes each operation it needs to do so we depending on what mode it does it loads it in and stores it and gets it from the jump table which is down here now this is the jump table so this is the jump table so this is the array of all the modes and then these are what the modes do when it comes in so branch for example yeah is uh, yeah branch is mode i no branch yeah and so we get because we have to work out the offset with branch from the program counter you don't you know even though we put in dollar one one oh one oh it then works out right i'm at pro i'm at uh, address dollar one thousand so therefore i'm jumping 10 bytes into the future in in forward or if i'm doing own um, OFFO that means I'm jumping 16 bytes backwards and so it has to work out the offset for the branch and then we've got all the other modes and what they ha what it happens to do and then w once they have been sorted so it does the jump here but I'm going to change that because I want to make this work for a cartridge because I can't have self modifying code in a cartridge once it does that, it then stores everything that it's evaluated in the address location and then sets up the next line ready for um, the user input and then clears out the, um, the array and then goes back to the command line. So that's the assembler in a nutshell and the disassembler is doing exactly the opposite. 
So the disassembler is taking first address and second address. So there you start address and end address. So we're going to get the first address, get the second address, and then we start running through it. So we start running through the uh, disassembler. And what we do is find this one, this one, there it is. So we start loading the memory. We store the value and then we evaluate the mode search. So we do another mode search, but this time it's the other way around. We, we know the number, so we then search through the opcodes at index 4, because that's where the opcode is. Find the opcode and then index 3 gives us the mode. And that determine that's how we find the mode when we disassemble. It's a lot easier to disassemble than it is to assemble. So once it's got the mode, then we set we can then print out the <coughs> the line. And basically, it's you know first thing we do is we print out the th um, the greater than sign, then a comma, then a space. We work out the next vector, next uh, address vector, print that out, print a space, and then we do a, a, a no byte routine, which is to work out and adds the number of bytes that we need to do, and then compiles what we've got in the temporary storage. So we put the um, what we're going to print out in the temporary storage from the mode selectors and here so when we got the mode it actually stores it in the um, temporary storage and print and so once the mode's been done it then just prints it out and then we set up the next line and it's as simple as that the disassembler is a lot easier than the assembler even though you think I'm, hang on, I'm doing it in reverse but you're not really doing it in reverse because in re reverse you know what the opcode is so therefore you can determine what mode it is and then you can just reflect that mode by doing a load of prints as an assembler you have to work out what mode you are because of the fact that you can there's many addressing modes for quite a few of the commands so load and store I probably have the most addressing modes in here so with that what we're going to do now is we're going to I'm going to fire it up so you can see what it's doing. So here we go, we've loaded it up. So we do start it. 496.9. There we go. So to assemble, type in A, start address, opcode, operand. There you go. Uh, store in dollar o four hundred. Load dash dollar o one. Oops. Dash dollar o one. Store it in dollar o four two. Break. Right. So that's stored that into the memory. Now we can prove that because we can go into the monitor. Yeah. So we're in the monitor. And we can go into the disassembly part of it and look at 1000. There we go. Cool, we have to be right on the nail. There we go. Now, as you can see, the disassembly. The this disassembler is trying to disassemble FFFF. So if we go to FFFF and try and um, convert that into a, a different number so you can disassemble it right. Right, so we, we'll make that a zero. Can we set that to a zero? Or is it not going to let us set it to zero? Rats. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not going to set it to zero. How am I going to set this to zero? Alright, so we'll not use that, we'll do this. Disassem uh, disassemble 1000 to 1010. There you go. So, as you can see, the um, vice monitor has seen what we've stored in, in there. So we'll just exit out of there. Now we're back to my monitor, so we're going to disassemble 1000 to 1010. And there you go. So that is an assembler and disassembler routing for my machine call monitor for the Commodore 64 and the VIC-20. So put the, I'll put this on GitHub so you guys can look at it and criticize if you want to please do so and um, I will see you in the next video when I've added a couple more um, commands. Take care, bye! I'd like to thank all the Patreons that are contributing to my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Thank you very much.